talk about two. I'm actually going to Berlin, so I'm happy about that. Should be going there next week, so I'm really looking forward to that. Should be absolutely of a barnstormer of occasion. And yes, I do know I trashed the place. I made some very disparaging comments about the time I was there and criticised all the hipsters and criticised the club culture and essentially was, um, you know, saying without saying that I was kind of over it. But unfortunately, I have some holiday left over and I didn't know where else to go in Europe. I didn't want to go anywhere too... East, Eastern Europe or Central Europe um, obviously Kiev is completely off the list now considering what's going on over there with the war in Russia and obviously my thoughts and prayers go out to anybody over there that's affected with it I didn't want to go anywhere inland here in England because I can do that over the weekend and I had like a weekend free so no, I could do that over the weekend in terms of not taking holiday and I wanted to actually take a proper like Friday off Monday off because the last time I went I actually went and did a bit of um Working from home, I didn't actually go there just on holiday. I went there obviously partly to do my work and obviously to work to go and have a night out. And effectively, the reason why I did it that way is because I wanted to prove to myself and I wanted to see if I was grown up enough, mature enough to go and do that. Because I think in the past, maybe prior to the pandemic, I would have been the type of person who would have probably sacked off work and got in trouble and then just went out. But this time around, I was way more responsible. I just effectively treated it like I, it was any other weekend when I was working at home. And I effectively just worked in the morning, finished my, my work in the evening, and then bam, I headed out, got something to eat, and then went to the club. So that's effectively how I went and did about my thing. So maybe that kind of affected my overall way I perceived the nights out because I was effectively leaving clubs in Berlin at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., which is effectively, it's like leaving a nightclub at flipping 10 p.m., in Berlin because they go on for so long so when you leave at four it's effectively getting that to its best that's when all the actual good people come in that's when the good music starts and stuff so maybe I've messed up that way but with regards I'm still looking forward to it anyway one well, of the first thing I'm looking forward to is I'm going to look definitely this time around hit up loads more different clubs i spent way too much time in Berghain. i love that place but it's good to kind of mix things up when you go to a city like um, berlin as i mentioned in the previous topic talking about how many nightclubs in london have closed down i read an article that said we have 1130 nightclubs in the entirety of the uk which is wales and scotland combined but in berlin alone one city they have over 4000 close to 5000 bars and nightclubs in that city and one of the main places i want to go and visit which i haven't visited for a while because it's been closed is trezor a legendary nightclub legendary techno nightclub in berlin a nightclub that i'm pretty sure is still in the same location because even though this video i'm going to play from night 96 um, shows a very completely a, a very different Berlin to the one we're used to it still kind of reminds me a lot of the same sort of way that I kind of would go when I was going to Trezor in terms of crossing the street or crossing the road which is quite interesting but the one thing that kind of points out is very interesting about it is back in 1996 the people that were obsessed with techno or obsessed with dance music were very different to the, how they look like nowadays in terms of aesthetic like there's a lot more color there's a lot more smiles there's a lot more talking, a lot more like, I don't know, there's a lot more, whatever that vibe is around it. Whereas these times I feel like a lot more people are kind of, I wouldn't say insular, but they kind of just focus on their own little rave. They're all wearing black. They're all wearing kind of ghetto, goth ninja sort of attire. They're all wearing really chunky boots. They've all got silver or reflective sunglasses. They've all got wacky piercings and electric type style um, tattoo art on their flipping bodies and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's all very uniform, which is something that kind of really pissed me off when I was there last time. And then, so the reason why it pissed me off because I felt like, how could I get looked at like a... So you know when you go to hipster space, they always look down on you because they don't know who you are. Not because they don't think you're cool, because they don't know who you are. Or sometimes they want to kind of try and big time you in hipster space. That's why most people don't like going to hipster spaces, right? But I find it difficult to get... I find it difficult to accept a hipster looking down on me or thinking they're better than me when they all look like each other, when they all look the same. The same thing happened back in the day in Brick Lane. When you saw people in Brick Lane wearing brown boots or wearing those Zara boots with those fucking hats and stuff and those fucking um, Taliban scarves back in the day, it's hard to take those guys seriously and let them kind of big time you and act like they're cooler than you when they're all wearing exactly the same attire. We can't be running with that. But regardless, I love the vibe of this video. This video is titled Trezor Club Berlin, Leipzig... Uh, Leip Leipziger Straza July J July 1996 and obviously it's footage from that time I'm going to play a clip of it now so you can see what people look like and you can also hear the sound of the music they were playing back then and I'm really 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 looking forward to going to Trezor when I eventually go to Berlin next week
great cars coming out of. Crossing the road to the club. It's funny though, because nowadays people don't do this. It's very frowned upon in Berlin to jaywalk kind of thing. People always cross at the crossing, which is weird. But the roads are really wide in Berlin. They kind of remind me a lot of, um, old enough, a lot of like New York. And then we go to America. As a Brit, we're used to jaywalking and running across the street when the cars are not there, not waiting until the flipping light goes red and stuff all the time. But you go to a place like America and suddenly like, oh shit, I can't jaywalk because it's, a, it's legitimately like 50 metres across or maybe like 100 metres across, you know what I mean? By the time I run over there, a car's going to knock me upside my head and my shoes are going to be flying up in the air, Reddit style. Look how dilapidated everything looks. Everything looks so dilapidated. If you're not seeing this via the podcast, essentially they're walking into this incredible industrial area. Everything looks like it's either been bombed or it's being knocked down so it can be regenerated. I can only imagine. I can only imagine how cheap the rents were back then around this sort of time. You could have a house there probably for like, what would you say, 100 euros a month or something crazy, high ceilings, loads of rooms. Um, it's not really, re you know, this, the buildings aren't full of people so you can make as much noise as you want. Loads of warehouse parties, loads of communication collaboration everything going on there just look at the site there just look at the people i'm seeing on screen now i'm seeing loads of blues loads of greens loads of whites loads of khakis loads of colors except for all black which is completely different to what we see nowadays again loads of scenes of people walking around And this is maybe another good part as well to mention. This kind of culture they have there, and I think they have in most European cities, in and around the clubs. We don't have that a lot here because people complain about noise pollution. A lot of it has to do with neighbours, not even to do with... Sight. Inside the clubs is already annoying in terms of London and the UK because they search you really aggressively. Security guards are always walking and patrolling the dance floors with flashlights and stuff. It's annoying. But the most annoying part, I think, of nightclub culture in the UK has to be what happens in and what happens in and around it because I feel like a lot of the joy a lot of the kind of excitement of going to a nightclub is when you kind of leave your house when you're on the way there grabbing a little pre-drink or in this case in Berlin grab, grabbing a club mate maybe with a vodka mix in it grabbing something to eat quickly talking to somebody that's going on the way there that you're going to and just the whole ambiance around it. And when you get to the club itself, maybe you don't want to be on the dance floor right away. You're waiting for the DJ that you want to go see to play. So you wait outside, have a smoke, share a drink, get high, whatever it may be. Or just kind of, you know, enjoy your high when you're out there tripping your balls, whatever it may be. That's kind of the whole ambience of it, what happens inside and outside. But in the UK, we can't even have the outside thing because of the noise pollution. So they're always pushing you back inside, saying, don't keep the noise down, blah, blah, blah. And it kind of just kind of... It kind of just um, gets you out of your zone. Do you know what I mean? It's a real vibe killer. And I feel like this is part of the reason why those clubs are so amazing. Because, of course, they've got great spaces and they can do what they want in there. But a lot of the stuff around it is just relax and chill. You know what I mean? Just it's growing up. They treat like adults. One guy wearing all black. Wearing a black t-shirt, sorry. Dying his hair, dancing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, I see. I do see big hanging earrings. I do see the same type of glasses we wear nowadays, which maybe this is maybe interesting because the style is quite similar, but the colors aren't. So the color palette is definitely way darker nowadays, but the styles are very similar in terms of the big baggy t-shirts, in terms of the tight t-shirts, in terms of the combat pants, in terms of the kind of matrix style glasses, in terms of the really buzz cut short hair, in terms of the big hooped earrings. Those are very, very similar that I see nowadays. Even, even some, of the, some of the graphics on a the t-shirt, they're very reminiscent of what you see nowadays, but just not the colors. so cool but anyway that's basically most of it i'm going to show i'm not going to show the whole thing but you can effectively see everybody there um chilling having a well of a time enjoying themselves and um i'm really looking forward to going to trezor 
and I'm really looking forward to going to this event that I'm going to, which is Trezor 31, which is obviously their 31 anniversary at this venue called Craftwork Berlin, which I've never been to before, which looks absolutely incredible. It's like a multi-use type of space in there. They've got an exhibition running there at the moment, talking about the history of Trezor with loads of interesting things going on in there that's set really well. Um, it kind of reminds me a lot of Bergheim in terms of its architecture and what it kind of looks like in the, on the inside, but I'm really looking forward to going to see it and, and kind of hanging out in there and seeing everything that kind of surrounds it um, so that's going to be really really interesting to see when I do end up going there um, in Berlin when I'm there next week so I'm really 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 bloody looking forward to it and I can't wait to see this thing myself when I'm there I really really can't man it's going to be an absolute barnstorm an event it honestly is all these different people playing um, Ohm, Globus you've got the Heran Sauna event happening which I missed in London they played here at Fold but the tickets were sold out really quickly which goes to show man there's a lot of appeal a lot of desire for that kind of um trashy Euro trash centric club nights they have going on in um, Berlin for it to come over here people really love that kind of stuff so it sold really fucking well man it sold out completely there weren't any tickets available on resale nothing available on ticket swap nothing available on Facebook unless you want to get scammed again Facebook as well keep your eye out if you're person that goes to clubs whenever you tickets sell out or you only go to gigs people always random people always say yeah, i've got free tickets and they'll offer you tickets on facebook and usually they're always scammers random people that you, you would look at and don't think that they'll be into the kind of thing that you're kind of going to it's usually an easy sus or tell, tell them to send you proof and use a really pixelated image of a pdf it doesn't have any details of the event you're going to or it's done really poorly it's a really poor photoshop um but yeah a lot of people running scams on facebook when it comes to tickets which is really disappointing but um yeah there's a there's this going on and there's also the exhibition i'm not sure if it's if is it over already? Um, Trezor Exhibition. Is that already done? That's what I want to go to, actually. You can actually book it somewhere here. Oh, there it is, yeah. The Trezor Exhibition is available here to book. 5th of August, obviously, coming up, you can book it. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to going to this. Uh, yeah, so this is a Trezor Berlin. Um, is a personalised audio led exhibition experienced by in craft work through film, sculpture, archival image, objects and photography. The exhibition explores the three decade long history of the surrounding the techno club Big Bang in the early 90s. The exhibition examines Trezor's winding journey in the context from its prehistory and its unusual economic and social conditions of West Berlin to its transition into the cosmopolitan capital city of today. Through archival materials, oral histories and immersive immersive soundscapes created in partnership with Usomo Trezor's 31 exhibition explores the personal narratives that underpin techno club culture um, since its beginnings and aesthetics social movement so yeah I'm really looking forward to going to it um, different times of entry I'm probably going to end up going there I think on the Sunday I think that should be the time I'm going to go there I'm not really too sure let's double check the dates here oh am I not going at all oh no there's no dates there I can go on Oh, that's a shame. No, there is. Okay, there is dates. Okay, I'm, I'm bugging out. But yeah, I'm definitely going to go there. Hopefully on a Sunday, get it all locked in and ready to go. So I'm really looking forward to going to see the exhibition at Trezor. Really, really cannot wait to go and see that. Really looking forward to it.